I am going to be speaking on the topic that says trusting and depending on God of all possibility. Trusting and depending on God of all possibility. We are children of God. We are believers. We are born again Christians. We are people that have accepted Jesus into our lives as our personal Lord and our Savior. But we are faced on daily basis with a lot of things that threaten our faith. We are faced on daily basis with a lot of issues that makes our faith to look as if our faith are not stable in the God we believe and put our faith in. But the reason why God is bringing this message this morning is for everyone that can hear my voice. Wherever you are, you are watching on the television. The Lord knows you. You are watching on the social media. God knows you. And I know that the word of God that is coming for this morning is also made for you. Because there is something God wants to establish. So that you will know how to completely trust and depend on God. Even when everywhere seems to be in danger. Or you are looking around you and you are seeing so many things that are not working well. You are seeing so many things that are very discouraging. I want to let you know that you have to completely trust God and depend on God. Because the God we are talking about is the God of all possibility. When I say God of all possibility, I'm talking about the God that knows everything, the God that owns everything. He is God that knows what will happen next. Why are the reasons why you must trust God? Why must you have dependence on God? Why must you have your hope on him? Why must you completely trust him no matter what is happening to you? The reason is just very simple. Praise the Lord. The reasons are very, very simple. Number one, the reason is that God knows what will happen next. He is omniscient God. He knows what will happen in 20 hours to come. He knows what will happen in two minutes to come. He knows what your life will need in the next one hour to come. He knows how your life is going to be by next year. He knows people that are going to, you know, you know, help you and people that are going to become enemy to you. He knows people you are sitting down with now, people you are eating with, people you are drinking with, and he knows what will turn out tomorrow. God knows how your health is now. He knows whether you have malaria or not. He knows what is going to happen next. He knows the plans of the devil. He knows there are so many things that the devil has put in stock against your life. God knows all that. God knows that today you are broke. But he knows what will happen in the next one year to come, two years to come, three years to come, four years to come. There are a lot of people today, they are in one church or the other as ushers. Some people are in churches as assistant pastors. Some are in churches as choir. But God knows that they may be the people that will lead the end time armies. You may be today be the sweeper of the house and people come to the house of God. They say, oh, this one is just a mere sweeper of the house of God. But they may not know what God has in stock for that person that is a sweeper in the house of God. So there are many things we are going through today that we don't know what is going to turn out of it tomorrow. But God knows it all. This is the reason why you must depend and trust the God of all possibility. There are several goals. There are what? Several goals. The Bible call it the gods of the Amalekites, the gods of the Jebusites, the gods of the Hematites, and the god of the Perizzites, and so many of them like that. The gods of the Egyptians. The god is also the god on the other side. He called it the god made with haze, made with silver and gold. There are a lot of gods here and there, and there are a lot of people trusting those gods. There are a lot of people hoping on those gods. But does those gods have what is called omniscience? Do they know all things? Do they know everything? Do they know what will happen tomorrow? 
Are they the creator of heavens and earth? Are they the one that filled the whole universe? Are they the one that created the people that are serving them? No. The God that created the people that are serving him. Ah, this is, is God Almighty. The God of all possibility. Today I may be honorable. But tomorrow I may be dishonored. Today I may be respected. And you may be respected. Tomorrow we may not be respected anymore. Today I may be very rich. But tomorrow I may be broke. Praise the Lord. I want you to come and put yourself in that level where you understand that the only person to trust and put your faith and your confidence is the God of all possibility. When you are facing difficulties in your life, you must learn how to trust God. When you are facing challenges in your life, you must learn how to also trust God. Where you are, the going is good and smooth. You must also learn how to trust God. Number two is that our God never fails. He never failed those that trust in him. He never failed those that put hope in him. He never failed those that have confidence in him. Those that trust him, he can never fail them. He can never disappoint them. He can never turn his back on them. That is why you must Begin to completely trust him. Begin to completely put your faith in him. Begin to completely put your confidence in him. Always see him ahead. Always see him that he has something for you. Always see him that there's something he has prepared for you. Always see him as a God that has a master plan in your life. He can never change. Your mother will change. Your fathers will change. Your community will change. Your governors will change. Your president will change. People you so much delight in, they will change. People you say, oh, that person, I trust him. He can never change. I trust him. Ah, no, no, no. If it's my father, forget. My father is a no-nonsense man. My mother is this and that. And then you vouch for them and beat your chest and say they will not change. But in a twinkle of an eye, they can change because they are not God. But the God you must depend on and trust in is God Almighty, Jesus Christ. I know we have so many men of God that are very, very, they are very, when I say very, I'm talking about men of God that are very, very uh, uh, holy, righteous, and uh, trustworthy. But you know there are sometimes waves will make them to change overnight. They are still men of God. They are still servants of God. They are still everything. But what is the problem? The problem is that they are not God. That is why they can change any time. That's why anything can happen at any time. They are not God. Hallelujah, somebody. Number three, do not fear bad news. If you can trust God... God do not fear bad news. God does not see anything as a threat. Why you must trust and depend on God is that God never see anything anywhere, anyhow as a threat. He has the power to change, to undo, to remove, to replace, to plant and to uproot. He has the power to determine what happened next. There is no king of the world that can challenge him. There is no king anywhere that can challenge his authority. God is not a God that fears whatever is happening. Oh, hey, you know what? You know what my problem is? You know what my problem is? My problem is the greatest problem. As I come here, man of God, oh, hey, 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 my problem is too much. What is the problem? That problem you think is too much is not too much before God. That problem you think is impossible is not impossible with God. That your document you have been praying for, you want a country to give you the citizenship of their country and they are disappointing you, toiling you here and there, that document is not too hard for God to give to you. 
God is not afraid of the news they have given to you. Oh, man of God, you know, the problem is that they have told me to leave the country within 48 hours. They have told me to leave the country in seven days. They have told me to leave the country in less than one month. Yes, human beings have spoken. But God is not afraid of what they have said. God knows how to make things all right and give you what your heart is looking for. So we must all trust him. A wife can disappoint a husband. A husband can disappoint a wife. Children can disappoint their father. And father can disappoint their children. Anything can happen anywhere. But if you can depend on God, no matter what is happening anywhere, as they are happening, God will guide you through. I pray that God will guide you in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. Number four, you must know that God is the God and the source of courage. The God of courage and the source of courage. Oh, I want to build a house. Uh, the money I have is not enough. I'm thinking whether I should start the building. But I'm afraid. I don't know if I start this building, whether I'm going to succeed or not. If you can have the courage and depend on God and trust God, you can start that building. Even when there's no money in your hand, God will make the availability for you to have what it takes to build that house and complete that house in the name of Jesus. I prophesy you will build a house. You will build a house. You will complete the house in the name of Jesus. Another thing that you should know is that God is the one that makes way. Amen. Are you taking note of the things I'm saying? If you're taking note, shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. God is the one that makes way. He makes the way where there is no way. You might get to the end of the road and you see that, oh, there is no way out here again. The road is closed. I have gotten to the end of the road. What will I do next? Nothing in your head or what to do. You ask people, nobody has anything to tell you what to do. But in that situation, God is the one that will make a way. The Bible says there is nothing that comes to a man, no matter how tough it may be, that God is the God that has already made a way of escape. That thing you have confronted in your life and it seems that there's all hope is God, there's no way forward. God has already made a way of escape. The only thing is for your eyes to open. Remember when Abraham was going to sacrifice to God? The son asked him, I said, Father, we have the knife. We have the fire. We have the wood. We have the rope. Everything to sacrifice. But the realm of sacrifice is not available. Amen? Amen? The realm for sacrifice is not available. At that point, Abraham's heart may have failed him. As a man, he may have thought, oh, this thing I'm going, is it this my beloved son that I'm going to sacrifice? Well, no matter the fear, no matter the pain, no matter what, Isaac, my son, God will provide. <laughs>